One of the big features a lot of people are talking about are the automatic door closers. Now that's kind of far for me to reach. I can just touch this button right here, and look, the door closes automatically, kind of like a Rolls-Royce feature. Okay, it's time to take a test drive of the 2024 all-new Genesis G90. Now, this is one great car in the past. I've owned an Equus. I want to come in and give this a test drive because I'm shopping for cars. Here with me is the resident Genesis expert from Universal Hyundai Genesis. This is Darren Diaz. Darren, first, there's two engines available on this. This one is the turbo. What difference, what's the difference between that? I know it's some kind of hybrid. What is this car engine wise? Well, the good thing about it is there's a lot of new technology and right now to get performance out of a vehicle, not just fuel economy, they have hybrid engines. In this case, this is to get you a lot more power. So we do have a performance power plug equipped with a performance electric motor. Does it, you, do you have to plug this in at all? Not at all. This actually acts um, off of the charging from kinetic energy received from your brakes. Now, is there a separate battery for the hybrid portion or just the one battery under the hood? Um, all of the hybrid vehicles translate to having a different pack for batteries. This is a different style than new innovative technologies, what they call a skateboard pattern. Skateboard pattern is almost like a frame and they have these cards that actually act like they're actually different battery cells. Um, in this case, it's just for the cause of passing the energy through and collecting a little bit of energy as you're driving. Um, it is going to ask for a lot of performance. If you do ask for the performance out of the vehicle, it's going to have it power on demand. So that's kind of like what that So is there one or two batteries in this car? What, is both up front or one in the front, one in one the back? One in the front, one in the back. Okay. It's, it's similar to what Mercedes has done Correct. on some of their newer cars. Pretty much, yes. Okay. You know, I, we could do the walk around. There are plenty of videos online that show that. We're going to get inside and take a test drive. So stay tuned. Okay, before we get started, one of the big features a lot of people are talking about are the automatic door closers. Now, that's kind of far for me to reach. I can just touch this button right here, and look, the door closes automatically, kind of like a Rolls-Royce feature. Now, let's just do a quick walk through the dash. Tell me what we're looking at here. Well, the new innovation, the new look is less, than, less is more. It does have a lot of different quality materials integrated, but it is very clean. It's not like other sedans where they're gonna have a clutter of buttons and it's more refined. The materials have gotten a lot better throughout here. The time the yield and the Equus, these are actually real inlays. Let me tell you something, it's, it's, it's a very nice layout here. Now, how do we get this active up here on this big screen? Well, you have a couple of different ways of communicating with the screen. It's actually a tactile touch screen. You also have a navigational star right here, and there's a bunch of voice activated features that you can use to actually change your Okay, display. right now the screen's up. How do we turn it on? Well, the first thing that I can tell you is you can either just run your finger right through there and it'll appear all your widgets and the different options you may have. Also, you can hit the home button. Okay. It gives you, this is a dormant navigation. I got you. So if you actually tap it, you could actually get all the different stuff that you came I got you. Map it. Again, I'm gonna hit the back button and then I'm gonna come back to the same page. Now in here, you have all your radio stuff. Uh, your calendar is right there. If you tap it, it'll open up different features. Okay. So now, oops, one thing. Now let's turn that down. We don't need very easily. So you have the volume is right here. there. Okay. So you just press down. The okay. I know right there's there. a lot of thousand buttons. Whenever you get into a new car, it just takes a while to kind of get accustomed to it. Um, now, one thing I have to point out I owned, and I don't believe if I mentioned this yet, a 2014 Genesis, or excuse me, Equus, which was the second generation of that platform. The G90 is basically a rebranding or remarketing of the Equus to fall into the Genesis family. I love that car. It was one of the best cars that I've ever owned. The problem is two and a half years later, I went to go buy the newer model. And I'll tell you why I didn't get it. Not because I didn't like the car. They did something to the dash where it raised up higher and the seats would not go high enough. I'm not a tall guy. I'm only five and a half feet tall. And I want to tell you, in this driving position right here, I have a nice command on the road. I also like right here that you're doing something a lot of cars have gotten away from. You have actual buttons for your air conditioning unit. That's good. Read the Genesis website. I've seen you know, a lot of the other information. They talk about your adaptive suspension. Is that similar to what Mercedes introduced on the S-Class a few years ago? Like if you're going over a speed bump, 
you'll barely notice it because the suspension automatically adapts? Correct. It does have an active suspension, and that active suspension feature could actually rate the damper rates and change them. So let's say the traditional going over the railroad tracks where you have a lot of up and down. Well, this is actually going to set up the different suspension to be stiffer, and it has a different active plate that moves around and actually helps with that. Let's close the door. Let's go ahead and start our test drive. Yeah, I'm going to get my seat adjusted. The standard before, the seating position on this, for me, is really good. And we'll dial that over to drive. Now, uh, which way am I going to I'll go? Going to the right, or we'll circle to the stop sign and make another right. I tell you, just going here three miles an hour, I can feel this is really, it's comfortable. I'm going to just three miles an hour. But the steering is light to the touch. We're in comfort mode. We're not going to go in sport mode today. I know a lot of people, a lot of reviewers want to do that. I just think that's kind of silly in a luxury car. Taking a right here? Correct. Okay. When we hit the intersection, make it on the right. Please. Tell me about the adaptive cruise control. Supposedly, this has been improved for 2024. Oh, oh by the way, I want to point out right now, this is nice when I turned on my right turn signal. You got your blind view cam? I, I see that there, I'm sure. If I did the same thing on the left, it would pop up here. Yeah, that's something that the whole Hyundai Genesis brand has done a good job on, on doing that. Okay, talking about adaptive cruise control. Again, I'm comparing this to Mercedes because that's what I'm driving now, and it's a really good system. How is this different or better? Well, have you noticed, even in the camera view and the blind spot view monitoring, the camera view is very, very detailed, right? No, so it's a good camera. So it's a faster producing camera to produce more information. The same thing has been put on the cameras on the forward. So your forward collision, now with your smart cruise control or adaptive cruise control, has a better eye, it could see better, it sees at a faster rate, and it transfers that information to the car faster. How is it in stop and go traffic? Well, stop and go traffic is even more accurate because it has um, something closer to measure its position from. So that beam travels less and bounces back. Back to the infotainment system for a moment. This has Apple CarPlay, does it also work with Android Auto? Correct. Okay. And now, uh, do you have a nice route we can drive? I really want to see what this is like on the highway, you know, to, to feel. Make a right over here. You know, this is a cruising car. Oh, and this has four-wheel steering, too. I noticed when I came around that bend, this did not feel like a huge car. Correct. Is well, that always active, or how does that work? That is actually an always active feature. Um, and also, right now, it's daytime, so we don't see what it does with the lighting. But when you put that turn into it, it's actually going to pivot the light, and it's going to light up with the area where you're adding to. So your intended path is always visible. Getting back to the head-up display, when I had the Equus back then, that was the first and only car I've ever seen that included a duplicate of the blind spot information, you know, that you see the amber signal in your mirror, on the head-up display. And that is such a wonderful feature, because if you're driving and, you know, even before glancing, you know that there's a car in your blind spot. That that really is a nice feature. But I need to understand this adaptive cruise, because I have to take, as a senior citizen, to me, whether I'm driving in town on the highway, that's one of the most important features that I think you can have safety-wise. Because as you get older, you know, you're still a young guy. You, um, your reflexes are just not the same. And, and I have to say, I love that this thing has just regular air vents. I mean, I have friends who have new modern Porsches. Take it. To adjust the air, you got to go into a menu screen. That's just no fun at all. Uh, okay, now, um, what other, and I want to focus this more on the technology. What other technology features are set up in this car? Well, let's start with the uh, Bang & Austin stereo system. We did have uh, Lexicon, which is a very, very nice stereo color. Bang and also gives you a little bit more acoustics, a little bit of higher sound. It actually has a way of emitting sound reaps to block off noise to your BIPs and back to having eyes. Let me talk about the drive. We're in comfort mode now. It is comfortable. You know, the uh, we're not on a road that has a lot of imperfection, but it feels good. The steering wheel, while it's light to the touch, is firm. I can feel the road, but it's not... It's not a jarring experience. Well, within the internal settings of the vehicle, you could go into the setup and you could 
braking, how it accelerates, how it accelerates after it comes to a stop, after the adaptive cruise control, how you want to come back to speed. I will tell you, stuff. after increasing the distance to the maximum, which it gets this four links on here, mm -hmm. it does, it's not as jarring. It is much smoother that way. These seats are as comfortable, if not more comfortable, than any other car that I've owned to trip and i got to give you kudos for that. Now, being a shorter driver, I'm five and a half feet tall. A lot of people don't comment on this type of thing. I have a commanding view of the road. The seats are up high. It feels good. I feel confident behind the wheel. That's a very good thing. Also, unlike a lot of luxury cars today, it seems that the manufacturers are making their seats firm. This is firm, but it has just enough cushion where you can see. I could see driving this car on a long trip and it would feel comfortable. Now, a lot of the talk here is about the back seat. Granted, you have one thing that you're doing back here that is different. Not only do you recline, you have massaging in the rear, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, of the two engines, this one is the turbo. Without getting technical, what is the big difference between this other than some additional horsepower? Well, in this case, it has the uh, electric motor also to I would give you more of a sport feel. It's not just built on giving you full economy. It's built on giving you actually the performance of the flight designer out of the Okay, now this is six-cylinder engine. Again, the Equus I had back in 2014 and 15. That was an eight-cylinder. It was that cow engine that just had every, won a lot of awards and everything. Why did Genesis decide to go with a six-cylinder engine on their flagship vehicle? Well, the reason is there's a lot of different economical stuff going on from being eco-friendly and moving forward and not giving giving up on giving a bit forward. So they went to the six and they paired it with the electric core so they can make up for that. The extra two cylinders you might be missing. I tell you, it does drive really nicely. And I have to tell you, for anybody who's shopping for a car like this, if you're looking at a Mercedes S-Class, a BMW you know, uh, 7 Series, let's say, uh, a Lexus, the LS series. This is a car you might want to take a drive on. Okay, let, let, let's talk about your dealership and the prices and everything. This car stickers right at $100,000, correct? Correct. Okay. Are you doing market adjustment fees? There at this is point? no market adjustments at our dealership. Yay, because I got a taste of it. I was talking to a friend. Uh, before I came over, I said, you know, the moment they say market adjustment fee, <laughs> you're going to be chasing me through the parking lot. Let's talk about dealer fees. Sometimes they can be excessive. What's a dealer fee in a car like um, this? The dealer fee at our dealership is standard on every vehicle. It's 970 equips. It's a little bit less than anybody on the whole strip. Okay. And um, we don't lose anybody based on price. Okay. What is the ownership experience when it comes to service? It used to be for Equus. They would come to your house, they'd pick it up, they give you a loaner car. How are you doing this on the G19 well, the today? Well, the great thing is that Genesis offers that. Yeah. That's actually for the toll. Oh, okay. The okay, out. I'm sorry. Okay. okay, we're back to ownership service experience. Okay, so now Genesis has offered this part as your warranty, this cost of air service. Cost of air service, actually, they'll come provide you with a vehicle, bring it to you, take your vehicle, it'll be maintenance, you might be at the golf club, or might be at work and can't get away. So we have a costly service is good for three years, 36,000 miles, whatever comes first. And somebody will accordingly bring you an equivalent vehicle and take your So if I bought a G90, I would get a G90. Correct. If it, based on availability, but most of the time, all these things are done in a timely manner so everybody could be addressed. I'm, I'm exiting up here. Right. Does this have automatic lane change? Yes, it yes, does. It Yay. Yay. Have the automatic lane change. That's a feature I've grown to really enjoy in my other cars. By the way, I'm demonstrating the lane keeping feature. My hands are right here next to the wheel in case. Now, this has a touch feature on it. Okay, my driving impressions before I run out of battery time here on this Insta360 360 camera. That's why you're able to see it around the car while we're driving. Um, the driving is good on it. The lane keeping is good. I'm not sure about the adaptive cruise control because it's different than what I'm used to. Uh, it is holding the lane keeping for more than a few seconds. I mean, you're watching me right now. It's doing a good job. My hands are right close here. I would not typically do this driving, but it's doing a good job. It's taking the turns well, and I think I can feel the four-wheel steering when I'm doing this. If other people are shopping for other cars in this category, I'd say this is a must drive. And 
I remember years ago, when I bought my first Volvo, the salesperson there told me, this is 20 years ago, she goes, you know, I could sell this car on seats alone. And she was right. Back then, before the Chinese took over Volvo, they had the most comfortable, supportive, cushy seats in a car. This is back there to that level. So I want to applaud Genesis for doing that. Those are the types of things. By the way, where are we turning? Are we going to the airport? Yeah, we're actually going to make a cool U-turn. Oh, a U-turn. Okay, anyway, I want to thank you so much for your time. We'll get back and we'll talk more about this vehicle when we get back to the dealership. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.